Hi, I'm Joan Cartan Hansen, and welcome to Science Trek's 360 degree immersive tour of the Idaho Botanical Garden. If you're interested in botany, this is a great place to learn about plants. And joining me on today's tour are Hannah and Caleb, and also Elizabeth Dickey, who's the Education Director for the Idaho Botanical Garden. So let's go on the tour. Okay, so we're going through our contemporary English garden. It was designed by John Brooks, a uh, famous landscape architect. And so we don't have the same plants you'd find in England because it's a lot hotter and drier here, but the overall look is of what English gardens um, are gonna be like. So here we have the European um, hazelnut tree and it's growing um, nuts similar to what you're gonna find in the supermarket. Um, around here we have boxwoods, but I think it's because you can have them grow closely together to form a box to use as a, as a planter. So it's a very useful plant in your garden as a hedge. And then we have viburnums, and if you come back here in the spring, it has beautiful flowers that smell fantastic. So this is a, a great one to have. So here's some of the useful plants we can have in the uh, herb garden. Here's the salad burnet that you could eat or use it to stop bleeding. Um, down here we have some the, the uh, lemon balm that you can use um, as a, if you wanted to relax on a hot summer's day, you make a tea out of that. Oh, and then we have the lavender. If you rub the oil in your skin, the mosquitoes will stay away from you. Oh, and this is a great one. Um, fennel, you can grow it to make your garden look beautiful and caterpillars really like it. So if you want to have some butterflies in your yard, you plant that and the butterflies um, come and visit your garden. So here we are at some of my all-time most favorite plants. These are the carnivorous plants. Because they can't get what they need with their roots out of the soil, they have to eat insects in order to get the uh, proteins and some of the other things that they need to survive. On that far end, we have the Venus flytraps, and um, they have three little hairs, and if a fly touches one of those hairs, um, nothing happens, but if they touch two or three, that tells the plant there really is an insect there, and then it closes and traps the bug inside. And then these taller ones are called pitcher plants, and they have sort of a nectar in there that smells good and some colors that call in the insects. And they go down the tube, and the tubes are very either slippery or they have little hairs poking down, so if a bug falls in, they can't get back up. And then we also have the um, sundews, and they're called sundews because they have little droplets of liquid that shine in the sun, and they catch itty bitty tiny little bugs like mosquitoes and gnats. So now we're going into our vegetable garden, and the purpose of our garden is to show people different ways of growing vegetables, and then also to help people know where their food comes from. So this is our potato plant, and a lot of people, when they think about potatoes, they call them a root vegetable, but it turns out the potato is not a root at all. It's really an underground stem, and so the, st um, the leaves and the roots come out of the potato. So it's a special storage um, device for the potato. So if you have an underground stem that holds food for the plant, it's a tuber. So if you're gonna have mashed potatoes for dinner, which you're, you're having mashed tubers. So here um, we have a cabbage, and so you can see how it grows before it gets into the supermarket. They take all the extra leaves out, and you're just left with the head. And um, the cabbage family is kind of cool because um, what farmers have done is take one species of plant and made it into many different types. It's amazing sort of like how dogs have been developed into these different types of breeds that look very different. Cabbages have been bred into the, all these different plants that don't look similar at all, but they're actually the exact same thing. Uh, Potambo Gardens uh, fulfill many different functions. One, it's just a place for people to come in out of the city, um, to explore the grounds and, and sort of be out in nature. Uh, also, they are used for educational purposes. We have classes year-round for adults as well as children. And then also their research facilities. So they do a lot of work on native plants, plants around the world, um, developing new varieties of plants as well. You know, I'm sorry we've run out of time, and we've barely had a chance to see everything there is to see here at the Idaho Botanical Garden. So I really encourage you to come and visit for yourself in person. And if you want to learn more about botany, go to the Science Trek website at idahoptv.org slash science trek. My thanks to Caleb and Hannah for joining us for the tour, and thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time on Science Trek 360 Degree Immersive. Let's go look at the koi pond.